Okay, so welcome back to this third part of the video on uh, an example of how to use the law of total expectation. So, so far, what I have shown you is that we could calculate the expected value of y by integrating over all of this orange triangle, the probability density function times y, basically. And the reason that that works is that when we're taking the expected value of y, what we really mean is go through every outcome in the abstract probability space, look at its value of y, and take the mean of all of those. So we mean go through all of the values of s, look at its value of y, and times it by the probability of getting that value of s, and sum them all up. That will give you the mean value of y, which is what we define to be the expected value of y. My claim is that by performing this integral, we are doing that, because this means go through every value of x and y in this triangle, in this orange triangle, which we've already talked about, every point, little x, little y, in here has a corresponding point in here, and every point in here has a corresponding little x, little y in here. They're in bijection. It's a one-to-one -one correspondence. So by doing that, I go through every single outcome. Uh, in our abstract probability space. Then I take the probability of that little outcome, which is this here, the probability density function times an infinitesimal little area, and then I just take it and times it by its y value. So that should do this. Right, let's try and ex play around with this a bit more. So firstly, let's replace just integral over orange triangle with some actual limits. So basically, if I want to integrate over the orange triangle, Firstly, let's perform uh, the integral with respect to x as the outer integral. So we'll perform it as the second integral. So we need to integrate over x values from 0 to 1. So we're integrating from x values from 0 to 1. Now, the integral of the y value is going to depend on our x value. So for the integral of a y value, we're going to integrate from 0 to this top bit here, to the value of x, basically. So all I've done is replaced this integral over the orange triangle with some actual limits. So I'm saying, OK, we'll integrate from 0 to 1. And what do we need to integrate? Well, we need to integrate the integral over the y domain, basically. So every time, we need to integrate uh, the integral of the y bit. And the integral of the y bit needs to go from 0 to the top here. Now, what is that value? Well, it will depend upon what your x position is. If this is the line y is equal to x, then that value is basically going to be the same value as your x value. So you need to integrate from 0 to x. And now we've got the probability density function evaluated at little x, little y. And then we're integrating, we're timesing that by y. And then we're integrating with respect to y. And then we'll integrate that integral with respect to x. So that is what this means, basically. Right, now there is a clever trick that we can pull. We do not know this, but we've discussed what we do know and haven't used yet. What do we know? We know that if, if we know the value of x, if we condition upon the value of the first break, then we know how the value of y is distributed. Basically, what we know is that if you take uh, if you basically take the random variable, which is y, conditional on x equaling some value, little x, then what we know is that that is distributed uniformly on the interval to, from 0 to x. So let me explain exactly why this is true and what this means. What, in words, what I've said is that um, once you've made the first break and you then go to make the second break, the probability of the second break being within that inter anywhere with on that within that stick from zero to the first break is it's uniformly likely to be anywhere basically okay so what i'm saying basically is that if i look at the run if i just restrict my attention uh to the uh, events that the first break is at some little value little x so basically what i'm saying is if this is our stick here i'm now saying that i know the value of the first break Okay, so I'm saying just restrict your attention to the event that big X is equal to little x, i.e. the first break is at little x. So basically, in this picture here, what I'm saying is um, if this is little x here, in fact, I'll draw another little x. So if this is little x here, 
then this line of points here in this triangle corresponds to this event that little x is equal, big x is equal to little x, sorry, that the first break point was at little x. So all of these points in this on this line all have that, uh, have were broken. Their first break was at the same point. But then what varied is their y break. So their second break varied, but their first break was a fixed value. So what I'm saying is that if I restrict my attention to that event, so now I'm saying, OK, forget the whole triangle. We're just going to consider that event there as our whole probability space. And we look at the random variable y, which is going to map every point in this probability space onto a y value. Right? It's going to map it onto where the second break was. Um, so basically, we've taken the subset of this, uh, of this probability space, which is here. Um, because of the bijection between these two, we can represent this as this triangle. And basically now the y, var the y random variable is still going to work. It's still going to ascribe every point in that pink event now, or that pink probability space, because we promoted it up to being a probability space. It's still going to ascribe it a y value, which is the point at which the second break. And they've all have been ascribed different y values. So you can see that from this picture. So this um, these ones up here are being ascribed higher y values than these ones down here. Right. And basically what I'm saying is that if I look at what the probability density function of um, those y values is, it should be uniformly distributed on the interval 0 to x. Right. So how would I actually calculate the um, probability density function of this random variable y given that x is equal to little x uh, evaluated at some value y. Well, what I know what it is. I know that it's uniformly distributed on 0 to x, but how would I get that from this joint probability distribution here? Well, basically, what I would do is I would say, OK, um, what I want to do is I want to calculate this probability density function. Now, what's the definition of a probability density function? Well, it means that I should um, I should uh, multiply. If I multiply this by some little interval delta y, that should give me the probability that you're within that interval delta y, basically. So now what I need to do is uh, work out how you would get that probability in terms of this one. And we'll continue that in the next video.